Hello everyone, welcome to our channel Codis Arcade. In today's session, I will be talking about another two very important concepts in the object oriented programming concepts in Java. So the two concepts that I am talking about are method overriding and method overloading in Java OOPS concepts. Before starting this topic, I would like to request you people to please like and share our videos because that will motivate us to create more and more videos and bring forward more beautiful concepts to you. And also, if you like our videos, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel Codes Arcade and also press the bell icon because that will help you to receive notifications regarding our latest updates, right? Okay, so without any more ado, let us get started. This is Aurab and today I will be talking about method overriding and method overloading in Java OOPS concepts. So let us first go on to our ID which is IntelliJ IDEA. Yeah, as you can see here, uh, I have already made some notes for you. Method overriding and method overloading in Java. So what do you mean by method overriding in Java? Uh, let me give you a definition. I have written for you as you can see here. If the child class has the same method as declared in the parent class, it is known as method overriding in Java. What I mean to say is, we will have created a method in the parent class. Okay, that method we will again use in our child class according to our requirement. Such kind of property is known as method overriding in Java. In other words, it can also be said as if a child class provides the specific implementation of the method that has been declared by one of its parent class, it is known as method overriding. So this means that in the parent class, we will just have a simple declaration or definition of the method and while using it in the child classes, we will actually specifically define and utilize that particular method that is known as method overriding. So let us see the uses of Java method overriding. So it is used to provide the specific implementation of a method which is already provided by its superclass. So a parent class is also known as superclass as you all know right. And one more thing method overriding is used for runtime polymorphism. I will come to this later because I have not yet covered polymorphism. When I cover the topic polymorphism, then you will know more about this runtime polymorphism. So for the time being, just remember that method overriding is used for runtime polymorphism. Okay. And now let us go on to the rules of Java method overriding. So as I said earlier, the method must have the same name as in the parent class. So both the methods in the parent class and the child class should have the same name. Secondly, the method must have the same parameter as in the parent class. So whatever method we have defined in the parent class, the parameters inside that will have to match the parameters that we declare in the child class. And as I said, it is dependent on inheritance. Therefore, it should have a is our relationship because is our relationship is available only in inheritance in Java. Okay. So these are the rules. Okay. Now that you know the definition, the uses and the rules for Java method overriding, let us look at some simple examples. Okay. So first of all, I will go to this sample.java class, which I've created for you. And here you can see, this is one class sample. Here I have one simple method which is void run okay in this what happens is i have used one print statement as you can see here it says student this is a basic definition of what actually we are going to do here right so in this case i am taking a method called run the method name can be anything don't worry about that the point that i am trying to tell you here is in this print statement, we are not sure. We have just taken a predefined name or string character in order to print something, right? 
So it's like this. I'm printing student. But by looking at this print statement, can we tell what actually is happening to it? No, right? So this sample class is the parent class where we have just defined a method. Now, in the child class, as you can see here, this is sample2. This is a child class which extends its properties from the sample class. So this sample is the parent class and this child will be the sample2. Now, this run method will be inherited by the sample2 class and just see here what I've done. Void run. Here I've used the print statement again and after that I have used student of class 10. So now it is particularly clear that the students belongs to class 10. So this is how we can inherit the properties of the parent class and utilize it according to our specifications or requirements. This is known as method overriding. Okay. So after that, what I've done is in the main method, I created an object for the sample to class by using the new keyword. And finally, I've used the object by, by using the dot property. I've used the run method. So when I run this, I should get this student of class 10. Let me run this for you. Right click run. Yeah, you can see here, student of class 10. So, according to the definition, let us move on to the definition once again. You can see here, if a child class provides a specific implementation of the method that has been declared by one of its parent class. So, here you can see in the sample class, this sample class just has a print statement which says student. But in the child class sample 2, what I've done is, I am particularly specifying that the student is a student of class 10. That is how we are giving a specific implementation of the method inside the parent class in the child class. Okay. Listen to the words properly. I am giving a specific implementation of the method in the parent class and using it in my child class. Okay. So this is called specific implementation. Here it is only a student and I am specifically mentioning here in the child class that it is a student of class 10. Simple. And this way there are many other examples which we can give, right? Suppose let me tell about a bank class. Suppose I have a method called rate of interest. So initially in the parent class I will define the rate of interest which is 0. But there will be many childs of this bank, right? Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to this rate of interest Java class that I've prepared for you. Here you can see this is the rate of interest class. Here what I'm doing is I am returning 0% as the rate of interest. Okay. Just see here. Yeah. But of this rate of interest class, I have created three childs or three banks you can say to be precise. The first bank is SBI or State Bank of India. The second one is ICICI Bank and the third one is Axis Bank. And after that, in this three child classes, I have specifically implemented the method of the parent class. And here I am returning 5% interest, here 6% and here 7% depending on different banks. So each bank will provide you a different rate of interest, right? Depending on that, I am using that like that. And after that, what I'm doing is, you can see here, I have a class test two, And in the main method, I am creating three objects of three different classes, which are SBI, ICICI and XS. And after that, I am printing the rate of interest, as you can see here. So, you can see this rate of interest, which is here in the parent class rate of interest, returns only zero but I am specifically implementing it and using it according to my requirement in the child classes because they extend this property or inherit this property from the parent class. So that goes according to the definition, right? I hope you have understood. Now, let me run this so that I can show you the output. The output here will be say SBI bank provides 5% ICICI bank provides 6% and then Axis bank provides 7% rate of interest. I will run this for you.
yeah just see here SBI bank provides rate of interest at 5 ICICI bank provides rate of interest at 6 and Axis bank provides rate of interest at 7 so this is what I meant the implementation of the method in the parent class specifically in the child class this is known as method overriding now we know very well about method overriding let us move on to the next topic which is method overloading in Java so let me again go to my text file which is my notes and just see here okay this is method overloading in Java so in method overriding we saw that the parent class method was inherited or used in the child class right but in method overloading it is little different just see the definition you will understand better if a class has multiple methods having same name but different parameters it is known as method overloading so as i told you in one class there will be multiple methods of the same name but the parameters in each of the methods will be different that is known as method overloading so there are two types of method overloading in java first one is changing the number of arguments and the second one is changing the data type of the arguments say from int to double to float or something else and let me tell you the advantage of method overloading also the advantage is it increases the readability of the program which means that the program becomes more easier to understand and read okay so now let me go on to my example so that I can show you the example of method overloading in Java okay so this is my example as you can see here I have one class called addition inside this I have two methods of the same name just see here carefully this is add a method the data type is int here also it is add and the data type is int but the only difference between these two methods is here we have two parameters here we have three parameters and so ultimately you can see that inside a same class or a particular class we have same name methods but with different set of parameters that's why it is known as method overloading we are overloading the method depending on the number of parameters that we are going to use inside it okay so now you can see that i have this class called overloading one inside this i have my main method and then what i am doing is i am printing out calling my class addition and then using the dot operator and calling this add method so for the first one i am passing two parameters 11 and 22 so it will directly go on to this method which has two parameters in a in p okay depending on the number of parameters that we provide in the method call it will correspondingly go to that particular method okay so here you can see in this function call or method call we have called it using three parameters 11 22 and 33 so it will respectively go to this particular method which has three parameters this is known as method overloading in java okay here we are explicitly providing two parameters and three parameters because we have made the definition like that it is overloaded according to the number of parameters that the user or we as the developers are passing. So let me run this so that I can show you the output. Yeah, you can see for the first one, we are getting 33. So 11 plus 22 is 33. And for the second one, we are getting 66. 11, 22 and 33. So I hope you have understood this, right? It's pretty easy. So in the first one, it is two methods of the same name but different set of parameters this is known as method overloading of the first type as i showed you here see method overloading by changing number of arguments in the first method we have two arguments in the second method we have three arguments and let me show you another example so that you can understand more about this so let me just comment this part out 
yeah see here let me again show you here here we have this thing number of parameters were different here we had two here we had three but this is the second case where we are changing the data type of the arguments okay this is a method of loading in java example 2 or the type 2 so let us go to the program again okay here you can see class addition it has this method which is int add the parameters here are two and the data type is int and int for both of them okay but see this this is also the method add but with different type of parameters so it is double and then we have the two parameters of the double type as you can see here so this is also method overloading type 2 where the type of the parameters is different okay so after that i am doing the normal thing only return a plus b here also return a plus b because it is doing the addition of the two integers or the two doubles in this case as you as you can see here okay so after that in my class overloading 2 i have my main method and finally i am calling the print functions and then i'm calling my addition class and my add method and passing my parameters see if i pass integers it is going to the first method but if i pass double it is going to the second method so depending on the type of parameters that the user passes it will go on to that particular set of method okay so this is method of loading type 2 so let me run this Yes, as you can see here, for the first one, we are getting integer value, which is 22. For the second one, we are getting double value, which is 24.9. So, we covered this method of loading also, right? So, there are two types, as I told. Changing number of arguments or the number of arguments will be different. And the second one is changing data type of arguments. So let me give you a brush up of what we did today. We learned about method overriding and method overloading. In method overriding, the method of the parent class is specifically implemented in the child class. That is called method overriding. In case of method overloading, in the same class only, we have different methods with the same name but with different set of parameters and there are two types which is the number of parameters is different sometimes or else in the second time we have the data type of the parameters different so this type is known as method overloading okay so i hope you have understood both the concepts properly if at all you have any doubts in them you can post them in your comment section okay i'll be very happy to clarify those doubts and if you really like this video, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like the video. And also, please hit the bell icon so that you receive notifications regarding all latest updates. Thank you. This is Saurabh signing off from Codus Arcade. Thank you and happy learning. Bye-bye.